this is a section now on uh, coherent detection. Okay. Uh, we are talking about the detection and demodulation processes for a phase modulated data. Uh, we talked a, a lot of detail, uh, we talked in a lot of detail about uh, intensity modulation direct detection systems. Uh, when we talked about receivers, we also talked about the noise in a photo detector and we said that the, uh, it is always good to operate in the short noise or the quantum noise uh, limited uh, system. Uh, and the way to do the quantum noise limited operation we said was uh, to use what is called as a heterodyne detection. In fact, we uh, talked about two types of coherent detection. One is homodyne detection and heterodyne detection. In both these systems, you had a local oscillator which is another laser uh, which was uh, fed to the uh, receiver. Uh, so, you basically mixed your signal with your local oscillator and the combination was uh, fed to the detector and we found that the short noise is now dependent on the power in the local oscillator. Now, the same system you can now use to detect the phase of your incoming signal. Okay. So, uh, direct detection receivers can be good for intensity modulated data, detecting intensity modulated data, but for phase modulated data we want to use coherent detector. But before we move on to coherent detector, we will do a very quick recap on uh, phase modulation. So, this is the uh, generation of uh, QPSK uh, data stream. Uh, so, you had a data stream 1 and uh, what you see here is the picture of uh, IQ modulator. We have discussed this in detail uh, earlier. You had phase modulator 1 and you had a uh, phase modulator 2. So, these are nothing but Maxander modulators and the operating point here is uh, for each of these modulators is chosen as the null point. So, that whenever you uh, go in with a data 1 0 this way, all what changes is, so this is the intensity as a function of voltage and if you look at the electric field as a function of voltage, it goes this way. So, all what changes in the output is the phase uh, when your input signal is high, the phase is uh, negative here and it is negative E. So, you have a phase shift of pi and when the input signal is negative here, the output uh, is uh, electric field is positive which means the phase shift of 0. So, you do the same thing uh, for the second data stream also. So, you end up in having uh, two constellation points either plus pi 0 or uh, plus pi. And at the output of the second phase modulator also you have uh, 0 and uh, pi and the 0 and pi will keep flipping depending on the data streams that you are passing into the modulators. Uh, but uh, before combining them you do a 90 degree phase shift. So, this is another phase modulator where you are applying a voltage such that it gives a 90 degree phase shift. The constellation rotates here, you combine these two and this is how you get your QPSK modulations. The uh, task now is to identify the phase of each of these constellation points. Right? Uh, before doing a demodulation process, we ought to identify the phase because your information is contained in the phase of the uh, signal. So, how do you do this uh, phase modulation? Uh, the answer is you should do the heterodyne setup. So, we will do a quick recap of the heterodyne setup that uh, we have seen before. You have your incoming signal, you have your local oscillator, you combine them with a beam uh, combiner okay? and then the combined beam is allowed to fall on the detector and the detector photo current is proportional to, this is proportional to E signal plus E yellow mod square. We did the expansion of this and we found that the output current is uh, uh, responsivity Rd times Ps plus PLO plus 2 root Ps PLO where Ps is your signal power, PLO is your noise power, omega S is your signal frequency, omega LO is your noise frequency and phi is the phase difference between the signal and the local oscillator. This is what we have seen and we saw that. Uh, these terms, the DC terms are typically uh, neglected. You will do a demodulation at this omega s minus omega lo frequency. 
which is also called as IF frequency. So, what basically the detector does is that you have omega s which has the data and you have your omega l o which is slightly displaced from omega s that does not have the data and what you are seeing is a beat component. So, you have uh, something very close to 0 frequency this is terahertz frequencies and this frequency is omega s minus omega l o and your data is contained here and you will put an uh, R f filter either you put a R f filter to detect this I f frequency or you would do uh, I f uh, beating with this I f frequency and you can e extract the in phase and quadrature components. But what is the problem with this approach? There are couple of problems with this approach. First problem is that even though the DC terms are neglected, there is noise in this DC terms. The noise is not uh, noise in this uh, 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 receiver actually increases because of this DC and there could be some interference which will fall on this IF frequency and that interference is not good for you. Uh, the intensity of noise of the laser will have additional phase noise because this LO has uh, intensity noise and that can create uh, noise. Uh, if the LO current is large, what will happen is this current is uh, current due to this RD PLO part is much larger than this beat component. So, that may saturate uh, low noise amplifier. If you have a low noise amplifier after the detector, that may saturate the detector. So, you need to take care always to filter the IF part before you take it through a local uh, through a low noise amplifier. The other important problem is that the state of polarization of this uh, signal field and the LO field should be identical otherwise you cannot just write it as the sum of LO plus signal. If the polarizations are orthogonal in fact the output is going to be minimal. So, these are some of the issues we need to look at and uh, we also said that this phase is something that you need to keep it matched in a homodyne detection. Uh, we said that the phase of the local oscillator should be matched with that of uh, yellow otherwise um, so in a homodyne detection you will not have this term. So, you will have a cos phi term and unless you make sure that the phase is locked to a value which is close to 0 your uh, heterodyne or homodyne signal will go to 0. So, these are some of the issues that we had discussed in a heterodyne detection. So, let us first try to resolve some of these issues. So, instead of uh, directly beating the signal and LO onto the detector, what if we take it uh, through a 2 by 2 directional coupler and the output of 2 by 2 directional coupler instead of uh, connecting it to a single detector, what if we uh, connect the output to 2 pin diodes. Okay? So, the change that we are doing is we are adding a directional coupler and we are also adding two uh, receivers and let us say I 1 is the response of the first receiver, I 2 is the response uh, sorry I 1 is the response of the first detector, I 2 is the response of the second detector. The output we are going to take is I 1 minus I 2. Let us see how this works. So, let us assume that the signal is represented by a certain uh, amplitude. If you are doing uh, on off keying, this amplitude is continuously varying with uh, time and it has a phase which is e power j omega s t, omega s represents the uh, signal frequency and it has a certain phase phi s. Now, if it is a phase modulated data, of course, this phi s is uh, what changes with uh, time. Now, let us represent the local oscillator field as e l o. Uh, we are not looking at it as a function of time because uh, we are what we are intending here uh, uh, is to say that there is no modulation in uh, local uh, with the local oscillator. So, this function of time is actually representing modulation. Uh, so, this is the field uh, that represents uh, the local oscillator A L O e power this is the amplitude of that A L O e power j omega L O omega L O is the frequency of the uh, angular frequency of the local oscillator plus phi L O where phi L O is a phase of the local oscillator. Now, you see that uh, there is a polarization controller here which is uh, now we know how a polarization controller works. 
which will help to align the polarization of the yellow um, along with that of the signal. Okay. So, we are talking about a, a modulation that is uh, having single polarization and we are trying to beat it with the yellow with the same polarization. Uh, I f frequency is of course omega s minus omega yellow and let us define delta phi s phi s minus phi yellow and as I said earlier signal and yellow are in the same polarization. Now, the output of this coupler is let us call it as E1 and E2. We now know the transfer function of this 2 by 2 uh, coupler. Let us say this is a 3 dB coupler with a split ratio, uh, power split ratio 50 50. The transfer function of a 3 dB coupler is this 1 jj1 and the input to this is Es which is uh, modulated and Elo. So, this is a simple matrix multiplication you end up something like this. So, this is what you get in the first arm E1 and this is the electric field in the second arm. So, what is the corresponding current? Uh, you know that the photo detector is, uh, does not respond to the field, it responds to the intensity and intensity is magnitude square of the total field that falls on the detector. So, I1, I2 I can calculate as uh, Rd and there is a by 2 because we are doing a mod square. So, 1 by root 2 square is 2. So, you have to do a mod square of this which is this and you have a mod square of this. If you do an expansion, you get something like again something like DC terms and then you have two terms which are at IF frequency. The difference is uh, notice that if you had not considered this uh, phase difference between the two arms of the directional coupler, you ended up with cos but now you have sin, right. So, sin omega IF plus this. Now, the output delta i we are going to extract as i1 minus i2. So, this is basically i1 a function of time, i2 a function of time. <coughs> remember, <coughs> remember you did not use any filters here, you are just subtracting i1 minus i2. So, all these common components, these are called as common mode output. The common mode output just gets cancelled, right, because you are doing a subtraction. Uh, this is common to both these uh, detectors. And uh, you have the other two heterodyne components which is plus 2 ASALO and here it is minus 2 ASALO. So, if you take a subtraction this will be 4 divided by 2 is 2. So, 2 RD ASALO sin omega IFT plus delta phi. So, this is your output and we know ASALO is square root of PSPLO. So, your output you got rid of the DC terms, you did not have to do any filter. So, all these interference effects, all this uh, you know saturation because of the yellow, all those problems are resolved. All what you needed to do is what is called as balanced detection. So, what is this balanced detection? You keep two identical photo detectors and subtract their outputs. What would the inputs? One should be phase shifted with respect to the other. So, the directional coupler is important, the phase shift introduced by the directional coupler is important and it is important to have two identical detectors so that the noise introduced by the detector, the thermal noise introduced by the detectors are identical, right? the short noise is uh, identical and uh, the response is responsivity is identical. So, you can basically cancel out all the common mode components and you get your uh, output which is a differential component and this is where your modulation is. So, you can extract your modulated data. So, the first step of improvement in a coherent detector is to use a balanced detector. Now, this works whether it is intensity modulated data or phase modulated data. Either case, you get a lot of benefit by rejecting all this common mode signal and common mode noise using balanced detector. 